In this video, we'll set up our PayPal IPN signals for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Alderher from Codemy.com, and in the last couple of videos, we've been setting up PayPal. In this video, we want to continue that and work on the signal that PayPal sends back to our website. We want to be able to do all kinds of different things with all the information that PayPal sends back. And in this video, we'll start to set that up. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Okay, so in this video, we're going to continue to work on localhost because we want to do some testing on this. So in the last video, we talked about Ingrok. So I've still got all the settings here uh, set up for Ingrok. And every time you restart Ingrok, I should have mentioned yesterday, probably, you'll get a new URL that you'll have to put into your allowed host and CSRF trusted origins right here. So I've gone ahead and done that. So let's head over to the Django PayPal documentation. And this is the library we installed on our app way back when, when we first started setting up PayPal. And these are the documentations. We've looked at this already. But if we come down here, scroll down a little bit, you can see this example code for a hooks.py. And that's what it's calling it. It's calling it a hook. Basically, it's a Django signal, right? So we want our app to be sort of listening for PayPal to send information. And here's the code that they say we need to do that. Now we're going to modify this because we don't need all of this stuff. In fact, I'm not even going to copy and paste this. I'm going to type it out myself because I want to change it a little bit. But basically, we're importing two things. Really, we only need the one. Uh, this is the signals from PayPal, the, this library that we downloaded and installed way back when. And now it's also asking us to import the models. We looked at this in the last video. That's where PayPal sends the information back and it gets recorded in our database. And then in order to look at that stuff, you know, to look at this specific thing, we need to import it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think we really need to do that. This is just for some logic to make sure that the status was completed. Eh, okay, maybe we'll do that. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, we need to create a new file and write some code. So let's head over to our code and do that. So I'm going to come back here and we're going to do this in our payments app right here. We want it to sort of line up with all of these other files, admin.py, apps.py, forms.py, all these things. So I'm going to come over here to, let's close some of these to make it a little more obvious, payment, right click and just create a new file. And then let's come up here, file, save as. It wants us to save that as hooks.py. You can really call this anything you want. And you know, here it says hooks.py. So the first thing we need to do is, before we do anything in here, we need to sort of add this to our app and sort of tell our app, hey, use this file, have it running every time our app runs. So we can do that in our apps.py file. And the name of our app, the specific app is payment. So we see payment config. And what we can do is inside of this class, we can uh, set up PayPal IPN signal, right? And to do this, we just create a little function and we're gonna call it ready. It's a ready function. This is a normal sort of thing uh, that Django understands what this is. And here we just wanna import that file we just created. So let's go import and it's gonna be payment dot whatever you called it. So we called it hooks, right? You do not have to go hooks.py. Uh, just payment.hooks will come into the payment app here and look for a file called hooks.whatever. Uh, so payment.hooks, that will do the trick. So from now on, anytime this app runs, this sort of thing is going to be, I don't want to say running in the background, but sort of. Uh, let's make sure this is tabbed correctly. There we go. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead and save this. Now let's head back over to that hooks.py file. And we want to import some things. So we want from paypal.standard dot models. We want to import that st underscore pp underscore completed. That allows us to do the logic that it wants us to do to make sure that the payment was completed. A lot of times people will go to the PayPal page and then cancel out of it and the payment is not completed. So this will tell our app that, yeah, they actually completed the payment, right? So then let's go from PayPal dot standard dot IPN dot signals. We want to import a valid underscore IPN underscore received. And again, this is just going to sort of allow us to validate the, the information that's coming back. Man, we don't really need to do this, uh, but I don't know. Uh, so I want to change this around a little bit. I also want to go from Django dot dispatch. I want to import a receiver. 
This will allow us to set up the signal to receive it. Uh, we're also going to want to import our models. I think we'll do that in the next video. And also maybe our settings. I don't know. Let's just do that now from Django.conf. We want to import settings so that we can look up our, if we go to our settings.py file in our original econ app here. Remember, we set the uh, PayPal receiver email. We want to pull that right out of there. So that will allow us to do that. So, okay. So now let's create a receiver here. So let's go at receiver. And we want to pass in a valid underscore IPN underscore received. Now, this is just a Django thing, right? A receiver that we imported here. And then we create a function. So let's go define, and we could call this anything we want. Let's call it, I don't know, PayPal, what, payment received? I don't know, something like that. Now we want to pass in the sender, which is the stuff that PayPal is going to send, and quarks. Uh, this is just a Python thing, as you probably know. So now let's grab the info that PayPal sends. Right. And we can create any sort of variable name for this. And let's just call this a PayPal object, maybe, whatever. And we'll, we're going to set that equal to the sender. Right. So right off the bat, uh, we can just sort of print. Let's just print that PayPal underscore object and see what this is. Right. Now, we won't do that just now. I'll tell you what it is. In fact, we can come over here. And let's see if we can find somewhere there's got to be, oh yeah, IPN and PDD variables. So this is the list of all the things. I think this might be out of date. No, oh, it's good. So here's the IPN transaction types. This is all the stuff that kind of gets sent back. So let's look through here. Here is the transaction and notification related. This is probably what we want. Uh, no, buyer information, payment information. Here's, we definitely want this. The auth status, maybe the ID, maybe the amount. Uh, we can get the fee. MC gross. This is going to be how much they spent, how much the payment got processed. So we can grab all of these things and now access them in our app. So let me just copy this one. And let's just come back over here and let's just print this out. So this is going to be PayPal underscore object dot whatever that variable is, right? So we can get funny with this if we want. We can create an F string, for instance. Let's say uh, amount paid and let's just sort of do that. I don't know. For now, this is good enough. Let's go ahead and save this and just see what's going on here. And this is just going to print to the terminal. We're not going to do this, you know, in production. We're just doing it right now so that we can see what's going on here. So let's head back over to our app. So, okay, we've got our cart. It's at 99.95. Let's change this to 39.98. And let's go ahead and check out. So I'm just going to come through here and put some nonsense, continue the billing, and let's go ahead and check out. And so we can log in. Hey, John, getting your wallet. All right, 39.98. That's what we expect. Let's complete the purchase. Okay, we paid. Let's return to our merchant. And this just sends us back to our payment success page, which is what we expect. But now if we come back over to our terminal and control C to break out of here, we see there's the object PayPal IPN4. And we see this amount paid $39.98, which of course is, here's the object, object four, and here's the amount. And if we come back over here, and come to the Django admin section. Oh, we need to turn our server back on. There we go. Reload this and go to our PayPal IPNs. We should see a one, two, three, four. That's transaction number four, which is what this is right here. PayPal IPN number four, right? And if we click on this guy, we see sure enough, 39.98 is MC gross. So if you look through here, you'll notice all of these things are explained on this documentation. This is developer.paypal.com slash API slash NVP dash soap slash IPN slash IPN and PDT variables. So you can check that out if you want or just kind of Google it or come to this page here. 
with the documentation and do all this stuff. Now we didn't do all of this stuff yet. Maybe we will later in the next video, but really all we want is this information because we're going to need to do some things to our model uh, for the orders, right? So right now the PayPal and our actual orders aren't connected in any way. So we're going to need to do that in the next video. And then we'll do that. We'll sort of say, hey, the order was completed in our, our hooks.py file right here. Instead of just printing this stuff out, we'll grab the transaction ID or the invoice number or whatever. We'll connect that to our order with the same invoice number. And then we'll update that model saying, hey, the transaction was completed. And then, you know, do whatever we need to do after that. So this is sort of the first step to that, getting all of this set up. And like I said, the documentation is a little different. It has this, this is just basically checks to make sure that everything is working okay. Because a lot of times, it's not a bad idea because a lot of times, you know, orders go wonky, people cancel or they change something, you know, it's in US dollars and they change it to euros or something. And you're like, wait a second, you're not supposed to do that. The, the payment could fail because there's all kinds of different reasons why a payment can fail with PayPal. So it's not a terrible idea to set up some logic to check to make sure the thing didn't fail, right? And inside of here, uh, you know, we can do some other things, but uh, slightly different. This is, uh, we did a dot connect in the documentation. Instead, we did a, a Django receiver, sort of a little more modern way to do it. And that's really all there is to it. So super useful. We'll get into this more in the next video where we start to connect our orders and actually complete our, our app. We also need to, uh, let's see, set this, where did it go? This payment success page. We need to work on that still. So we'll probably do that in the next couple of videos. And that's kind of all there is to it. So my name is John Elder from codingme.com and I'll see you in the next video.